Good evening. The veil of ecumenicalism or preaching of the love gospel. I've been seeing this a lot lately. You know, God loves you preaching the love gospel. We just need to preach the gospel of love. It's ecumenical. What is ecumenical? Ecumenical is bringing all the faith denominations together under one banner, the banner of Roman Catholicism. Uh, you want to know what ecumenicalism is? I'll show you. One second. Want to know what ecumenicalism is and where it came from? Right here. This is ecumenicalism. Vatican Council II. Uh, this is where the uh, whore, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and uh, abominations of the earth, uh, Roman uh, Catholicism, um, Satan's Church, they call us separated brethren. And all the while they are seeking to kill us. This is a masterpiece of the Jesuit order. Okay, This is ecumenicalism. Bringing all faiths together. And how do they do that? They do that through the love gospel. What is the love gospel? I'm going to share with you some uh, that I've shared before, but I'm going to show the, share this with you, okay? From uh, a little bit from Alberto, number one, and number two, double cross, okay? But I, you got to see this, okay? Here, I'm going to be reading these two right here, this one and this one. Go ahead and pause that if, and read it if you want. Can you see that? Oh, sorry, here. This one and this one. Pause that and read it. Okay, what is, okay? Now back to how I destroyed the Baptist Church in Venezuela. One half of the church believed the Roman Catholic institution was a Christian church, and I would tell them this. Oh yes, I have many relatives in the Catholic Church who love the Lord and I believe are saved Christian believers. It is a Christian church. Those who don't believe this are causing tremendous division and damage to the body of Christ. Many have been destroyed in their own Christian faith when pastors attack them. It causes all kinds of confusion, distortion, and dissension. It must stop. We must preach love. These are Jesuit phrases. Sound familiar? And then, you know, playing both sides. Then to the pastor... And those backing him, I would say, Oh, Pastor, you are right. The Catholic Church is not Christian. I've suffered at their hands in Spain. They hate Christians. My dear Pastor is still in prison. You must cry out against it. Look at my name in the newspaper. They called me a heretic. He purposely got arrested. So his name would be in there so he could feign himself as one of them. See, playing the victim. Preaching the love gospel. And, and see what these coadjutor infiltrators and these devils do uh, against people who will not back down. Even though they send you emails, hope nothing happens to your wife. If, that, if you are the one who sent me that and you know who you are, the Lord rebuke you. You can threaten me all day and all night if you want to. Hmm. <laughs> you ain't gonna it ain't gonna work. Okay, just just letting you know. Just letting you know. All your threats ain't gonna work. Okay? Tough guy. But what they like to do for someone who will not back down and will not compromise their stands, 
Uh, they like to, the coadjutors and the devils, they want to discredit him, isolate him, and then if that doesn't work, they'll do whatever they can to stop him. Um, have, uh, what is that, uh, identity theft, try to hurt him, do whatever they can to try to get this guy to shut up. But see, under constant barrage, there are some people who will fold after a while who will take strong stances, but then under constant barrage, they cave in. I'm going to read this for you right here. That one right there. Pause that and read it. Three pastors fell, a Methodist, a Pentecostal, and a four-square minister. We would demand they stop being anti-Catholic or else. Well, you might say, well, there are some out there who are not openly talking about Catholics. But see, when you go against the Catholic doctrine of easy believism, the Catholic um, anti-Semitism, <laughs> and seek to expose who is really behind the poison crown psychological operation, the steel of the Jesuit poniard. You're going against Catholicism. You're going against Satan. Unfortunately, there are some that can't handle that. Not yet, anyway. But, there are some that will go out really strong, but then under constant barrage, they fall. The mission was successful. All three pastors became ecumenical. They started only preaching about the love of God. They would never say again that the Roman Catholics were going to hell, all according to our instructions. And here's another, here's another thing from Double Cross, okay? From Double Cross. Going to be reading just this one right here. This right here for you. This one. Pause that and read it. Jesus demanded repentance and total separation. Well, we need to forgive people. Um, brethren who you have problem with, maybe, yes. Yes, you're supposed to forgive your brethren. But people who have made their choice and are serving the Vatican and are devils and proven themselves to be such, and they're your brothers? Mm. I smell something. Jesus demanded repentance and total separation, but today, this is hardly ever taught in most churches, Christian schools, seminaries, cemeteries or Bible colleges. Instead they are told this is the age of the brotherhood of man. That's Masonic. Masons are controlled by the Jesuits by the way. The churches are uniting under God's Holy Spirit. As you see, God is no respecter of persons. Catholics, Jews, and Protestants alike are all in the great family of God. This is the great revival sweeping the world. They are only pushing the deadly love gospel. Another act of apostasy created by the Roman Catholic institution to send even more souls into hell. It is very popular in the so-called Christian unity movements today. Yeah. Yeah. Preaching the love gospel. And you want to know something else? Here, one second. I, I got to get something for you. Hold on. Sorry, I had to had to get this. Uh, this book is out of print. Um, you might be able to find it off of Amazon or eBay. But I want to show you something about a Samuel Johnson. I'm going to read these right here in the red. Okay, right there in the red. Pause that and read it if you can. Okay. Okay. Who is Samuel Johnson? 
1709 to 1784, a famous English lexicograph lexicographer and writer wrote one of the first dictionaries in the English language. A man of highly respected judgment, <laughs> coupled with a probing wit, Johnson organized the London Literary Club. He wrote the significant work, The Lives of the Poets, 1779-1781 wherein he gives profound critical examination of 52 fam famous English poets Samuel Johnson attested and then he writes some other stuff but listen to what this Samuel Johnson said in 1763 sir I think all Christians whether papists or Protestants agree in the essentials in session in session essential articles and that their differences are trivial and rather political than religious and nothing could be farther than the truth. In 1772 Johnson commented all denominations of Christians have really little difference in point of doctrine though they may differ widely in external forms. <laughs> yeah, uh, if you, you this is the book, like I said, this is out of print. If you can get it, get it. It's an interesting thing. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Beware of the ecumenical love gospel. The veil of preaching the love of God. What is the love of God? Jesus Christ and him crucified. God so loved, past tense, that he gave, past tense. Okay. Um, if you don't come to Jesus Christ, God our Father, by way of the cross, through brokenness of your self-righteousness, contrition and godly sorrow for your sins that you have committed against God, guess what? It's your fault. And have godly fear and call upon his name, ask him for, your, for his forgiveness. Hopefully he save you. And when he save you, he will make you a new creature. But see, if you try to go another way, you're a thief and a robber. And preaching the love gospel, that's Catholic. That's very dangerous. Get your authorized version of the scriptures and turn with me in your authorized version of the scriptures to... Matthew chapter 5. <laughs> Matthew chapter 5. Sermon on the Mount. Read it. Where is any talk of the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ God? It's not there. Faith is mentioned one time in the form of a rebuke. What was the faith that they had to have? This is before the death, burial, and resurrection. Doctrinally, this is the Old Testament. God, the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, God, the King of the Jews, was there offering the kingdom of heaven onto his people. The Jews. Okay? They had to believe that he was their king. Unless you believe I am he, ye shall die in your sins. We'll look at that. We'll look at that a little later. Okay? Okay? But see, the difference is Sermon on the Mount, dear friends, is before the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Read the Sermon on the Mount real good. Find me anything where he talks about his death, burial, and resurrection to make atonement for sin. It's not there. Why is that? Because this is what it's going to be like in the Millennial Kingdom, they call it. Millennial Kingdom, by the way, Millennial is not in the Scriptures. Okay? It's the Kingdom of Heaven. But... 
This is how it's going to be for the kingdom of heaven. This is the framework, the constitution, if you will, of the kingdom of heaven. To instruct us in righteousness, how we should live and uh, ways we should behave, absolutely. But doctrinally, meaning pertaining to our salvation and um, being right with the Lord, doctrinally, this does not apply for us. You can get very good instruction in righteousness, but when you try to twist it into pacifism and lead it into the ecumenical love gospel, man that is an heretic after the first and second admonition. Reject. You understand? So, instruction in righteousness, amen. Doctrinally, uh, no. No, no, no. No. Let's demonstrate this, shall we? Matthew chapter 5. We're going to read verses 38 on to verse 48. Get the scriptures. Follow me along. Okay? I expect you to. And I'm going to speak to you as though you are. Comprende. Matthew chapter 5, verses 38 on to verse 48, the close of the chapter. Ye have heard that it hath been said, an eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you, that ye resist not evil. But whosoever shall smite thee on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if any man will sue thee at the law, and take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. And whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain. Give to him that asketh thee. And from him that would borrow of thee, turn not thou away. Now Paul talks about, you know, um, equality. Not that you be burdened and other men eased and stuff like that. Okay? Why? That's a different, it's a different dispensation. This is written to somebody else. This is written for a different dispensation. But, okay, he's saying, turn the other cheek. Don't resist evil. Why is he saying that? Okay? Why is our Lord saying that? Why? Because he is the king. See, during the kingdom of heaven, someone is if someone, you know, breaks the law, or is um, sins or does does whatever. See, they're going to have to deal with Jesus Christ personally, who will be sitting on the throne at Jerusalem, more sooner rather than later. Okay, they're going to have to see Jesus personally with their own eyes. See, okay. So as king. He, on earth, is going to be doing the retribution. Okay? So when he tells his followers, don't fight back. Why? Because God is on the throne in the kingdom of heaven. He's going to take care of it. That's why he is saying that. We'll, we'll, we'll prove that here in a little bit. Okay? So, when he tells his disciples here, his people, under the kingdom of heaven, someone, you know, smites you on one cheek, turn to the other. Why is he saying that? Because he is king. If someone does that to you, <laughs> he, our king, is going to deal with that person personally. Get it? Okay? See, people today, because evil against... Uh, uh, because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. Therefore, men's hearts are set to do evil. That's in Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verses 11 on to verse 13. Go look it up. Okay. Um, that happens today. But see, they're going to give an account sooner or later. During the kingdom of heaven, okay, the judgment is going to be far more swift than it is today. Why? Because the king is going <laughs> is on the earth. See, that's why he's telling his people, don't fight back. 
Why? Because I'm God. I'm your father. I'm your king. I'll take care of it. That's why he said this, do you see? We'll put up. We'll stay with me. Let's keep reading. Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. And <laughs> here you go. But I say unto you, Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Love your, bless them. Why? Why though? Because they're going to have to deal with Jesus personally during the kingdom of heaven because he's going to be personally on the earth. Jesus right now is not on the earth, okay? His body is, but he himself personally is not, okay? Read Romans chapter 2 sometime. That will really bring it into focus for you, okay? But, okay? He's going to be physically on the earth during the kingdom of heaven. Okay? Your enemies during the kingdom of heaven, because they're going to be there. Okay? Um, they're going to have to deal with our king who's on the throne. Okay? That's why he is saying. That's why it appears here in the Sermon on the Mount, he's telling them to be pacifistic. Why is that? Because the king himself is going to deal with it. On the throne at Jerusalem. Okay? Uh, don't, oh, don't worry. We're going we're gonna to do a little dissecting of verse 44 here. Okay? Verse 45. That ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his son, as you when, to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. For if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same? And if ye salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Do not even the publicans so? Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Now you got to remember, this is for the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is what? All works. Don't believe these stupid, easy believism, Catholic, Jesuit, coadjutor devils. They're lying to you. They want to damn you to hell to when we, the Church of the Living God, are redeemed. They, these easy believism uh, heretics, for those of you guys who, who are duped by them and get left behind, hopefully you're of that uh, big group in the beginning of the time of Jacob's trouble that figure it out and then you get taken home really quick because you truly come to repentance and you, know, you truly get saved in that time period. But uh, these, the easy believism, Catholic, Je Jesuit, coadjutor, devils, they want to take you to hell. They want to make you in the time of Jacob's trouble. Take the mark in your right hand or in your forehead. Don't believe them. They're liars, okay? But this is for the kingdom of heaven. The king is going to be on the throne, okay? The kingdom of heaven is all works. Prove it to you. Uh, look at uh, Matthew chapter 6, verses 14 and 15, okay? Matthew chapter 6, verses 14 and 15. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, look at this, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Now hold up a minute there, tough guy. Okay? You Catholic. Um... So your forgiveness, as preached in the Sermon on the Mount, is equated to you forgiving someone else. So your forgiveness is based on what you do, not what has been already done. Do you see? So if you don't forgive someone during the kingdom of heaven, you're not going to be forgiven. What does this mean? Uh, during the kingdom of heaven, there, friend, it's all works. There's no faith. Why? Because... Because you're going to see Jesus on the throne. You're going to see him personally. You know, God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Godhead, spirit, soul, and body. A lot of people like to say it backwards, body, soul, and spirit. Scripturally, it's spirit, soul, and body. Small point, never mind. Okay? You're going to have to deal with the Lord. 
Okay? Turn the kingdom of heaven, he's going to be a throne in Jerusalem. Okay? So the kingdom of heaven is based upon what you do. It works. See? Now, for our instruction in righteousness, mwah, brava! Doctrinally, <laughs> no. And when you got somebody who's trying to take this and twist it with, along with the, some of the Pauline epistles to try to preach a pacifism, I smell something. That's Catholic. That's Catholic. That's ecumenicalism. And you know, on other platforms, people <laughs> go ahead and look. Here on YouTube, it's rife and prevalent. But on other platforms, this love gospel, this, this is what the Christians in the buildings preach. This is what you're going to run, to, run into out there primarily. We need to preach love. No, you need to preach hellfire and brimstone. Because the love that these Christians are preaching to you and is going to send you to hell. But now let's look at verse 44. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. You know, Paul talks about when we're persecuted, we entreat and we bless that kind. How do you love and bless your enemies today? <laughs> Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. Be careful of anyone who calls themselves of the church of the living God and is preaching pacifism. Just to roll over and play dead. Romans chapter 12, verses 17 on verse 21. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in sight of all men, if possible. As much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, Avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, pay attention, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Now, before we dissect verse 20, okay, note the word vengeance. Um, in the Ten Commandments, it says, thou shalt not kill. But yet, when you look in Scripture, God actually doesn't really have a problem with killing, does he? Look it up and read the Scripture there, pal. Does he? What is he talking about? Let me give you an example. If some crazy nuts coming up to you with a knife trying to stab you, there are some out there who will say, just, oh, uh, just, I'm going to, here, go ahead and kill me. Because I'm, I'm a Christian and I love you, so kill me. You know, <laughs> um, that's, no, that's called de uh, depraved indifference, okay? That's called depraved indifference. It's talking about vengeance. In the heat of a moment, okay, if someone's coming at you with a knife, and you, you know, take it out of his hand, take him and put him down and you know, incapacitate him to protect yourself, God is not against that. Okay? God is not against self-defense. Okay, but see, if someone in a fist fight, if someone slugs you and you, you know, you're doing just like, hey, I don't want to fight. Ow! You do your best to take. I mean, I know of a brother who, um, whose own son attacked him, but he didn't fight back. He didn't fight back. He didn't. Praise the Lord. 
okay? He chose not to fight back. But see, if his life is in danger, if, you know, someone's coming at you with a knife or something, or someone puts a gun in your face and you defend yourself, that is not against Scripture. What is against Scripture is you going back and trying to get more vengeance. You know, in the heat of a battle, you know, when people go out to war, you know, in wartime, when you're fighting and you kill your enemy, that's war. But when it's after the, after the fact, you want to go keep going and going and going. You don't let it alone. Uh, rather, wanting to get even. That's what this is talking about. This is in no way telling you to be a doormat. If you want to be that way, if you want to be like, hey, you know, like I said, I know of a dear, dear beloved brother of mine whose own son attacked him. And he's like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I wasn't going to do anything to my son. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And this, this lovely brother took an assault, a physical assault from his own son. I commend that brother. I commend him. But see, if your life is threatened, you have children, you have a wife. God is not against you defending yourself. You know, do what you, you know, you know, knock it out of his hand, take him down and, de and incapacitate him or, you know, if you gotta, you know, knock him out and then boom, bolt, okay, for self-defense. <laughs> this is talking about, okay, recompense to no man evil for evil, provide things honest in the sight of all men. You know, we're not supposed to fight like them. We're not supposed to do what they do. We're not supposed to fight fire with fire. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. You know, if, you're, if something is happening, you do what you got to do to avoid physical confrontation, okay? And yeah, if someone slugs you, you're like, <laughs> yeah, okay, fine. But if your life is threatened, you know, a knife, a gun, a bat. <laughs> so watch out for those guys who wield baseball bats and like to drink and get behind the wheel of a car, by the way, too. Watch out for them. But um, when your life is in danger, Scripture is not against you defending yourself. If it be possible, as much as life in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. You defend yourself and you get whooped and somebody go away and you're not going to the hospital, um, you wanting to go back to that guy and like uh, do a drive-by or bludgeon him to death for beating you, that's, vengeance is mine. Especially if you were doing what verse 18 says to do. But, you know, if you're walking down the street and somebody comes up and puts a gun in your face, it's like, hey, give me your money. You can go ahead and give me your money. But, um, if I mean, if that's what you choose. But if you're, you know, if you come up against somebody who is crazy, insane, who is going to kill you, there is nothing wrong with you defending yourself. There is nothing wrong with that at all. What this is talking about is vengeance. Defending yourself in the heat of a moment is not sin. Trying to get vengeance after the fact, that is. Look at the text. Okay? Beware of this, brethren, of people telling you not to fight back. Um, like I said, um, my one brother, when his own sons punched him, he never fought back. And praise the Lord for it. But if his son were to come at him with like a butcher knife, a hatchet, <laughs> well, you're going to, what, just stand there and let him bludgeon you to death and 
uh, then no, 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 no. Scripture doesn't teach that you just stand there and get murdered. Yes, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. Yeah, very good, genius. Very good, very good. bravo. Um, yeah, but that is for us doing the work of the Lord. Okay? Beware of those who preach to you depraved indifference. Beware. Beware. Verse 20. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. How do you do this? Uh, by the way, uh, this is a quote from, uh, pretty much a quote from Proverbs chapter 25, verses 21 on to verse 22. But if thine enemy hunger, feed him. Feed him. How do you love and bless your enemies today? If your enemy hunger, feed him. Job chapter 23. Job chapter 23. Job chapter 23. Just one verse. Verse 12. Uh, let's read verse 11 and 12. My foot hath held his steps. His way have I kept, and not declined. Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. Verse 26. Uh, let's, uh, let's read verse 25 and 26, okay? Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. So wait a minute. Okay, according to what some people preach, um, if you're a husband... And you have a wife who depends on you for protection and safety? Some out there will say, well, oh, if someone's going to kill you, let them kill you so they can go and rape your wife. Depraved indifference. Uh, so, if you're a husband, like I am, if you're a father, like some of you are, some nut's going to kill you, and you're a father... Providing for your own, you're a husband providing for your wife, being a head covering and protection for your wife, according to what some people teach you. Um, you're just supposed to lie down and let them kill you? I smell something. Husband lo hus husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Washing of water. Verse 20 in uh, Romans 12. Therefore if thine enemy hunger feed him, if he thirst give him drink. Hmm. For in so doing thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Hmm. 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2. I beg your pardon. If you're there, <laughs> good for you. Wait for me. 1 <laughs> Peter chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies, and envies and all evil speakings as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word if you've got something that's not the authorized version of the scriptures um, is of the word in your translation no really you don't say guess what that's because that's a Roman Catholic Bible you need the scriptures the King James Version 
As newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. Let's read verse 3. If so be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Hmm. Hmm. Really? Because we, we, we have to remember, brethren, uh, Romans 10, verse 17. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And John 17, 17, sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is true. So, therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Now, some of your enemy uh, do that in the literal sense, give him bread and give him water, yes. But you know what? How do you love your enemies and bless them today? Give them scripture. Tell them the truth. Preach to them. Give them the scriptures. You love your enemies today by telling them the truth from the scripture. See, someone who hates you is going to say, God loves you. We need to preach the love of God. God's not angry at you. God's not going to judge you. <laughs> Asking for God's righteous judgment on the wicked that through that judgment they might come to repentance. No, that's actually you're saying you wish them that, that you're wishing them to be killed. <laughs> oh, they got to you, didn't they? They got to you. I'm so sorry. But they got to you. They got to you. They got to you. You love people because, hey, like the analogy I've used before, Someone who you really don't like, but you, you're supposed to love your enemies, right? How do you do that? Uh, hey, you got to turn your direction because the way you're running, you're going to fall off of a cliff and go to your death. You warn them about the danger that's coming. You tell them, it's like, okay, maybe, maybe here, I got, I got an instruction manual. Here, let, can I show you what, here, to, to turn this way, what this says, how to do this? Okay? But if you hate someone, what do you do? You cheer them on to the going to the edge of the cliff so they can fall off and plunge to their death. Yeah, yeah. I love you in the Lord. Keep running. Keep running. He's going for a cliff. Yeah, keep running. We love you. Now, again, go now to Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22, verses 35 on to verse 38. Luke 22, verses 35 on to verse 38. And he said unto them, When I sent you without purse and scrip and shoes, lack ye anything? And they said nothing. No, the miracle of loaves. The king was there. He will provide for his people supernaturally. Okay, that's what God can do for people. He can provide for them supernaturally. The miracle of the loaves and the fishes and that stuff, you know, having it miraculously appear in their hands as they're feeding 5,000 and stuff like that. Uh, with the king on the earth, he can do that supernaturally by his divine power provide for his people just in the same way when he tells them hey someone hits you on that side turn the other side because they're going to have to deal with me how is it you do not understand the miracle of the loaves you know when he says that in the scripture how is it you do not understand uh, do, do you not understand what that means how could you because uh, well, you're spiritually discerned smell something <laughs> but see verse 35 king as king God the father can supernaturally provide for his own 
the color of the, of the fish and the loaves. Turn the other cheek. And turn that cheek too so they can hit you. Don't fight back. Because they're going to have to deal with me. And he said unto them, When I sent you without purse and script and sh script, I said, and shoes lacked ye anything, and they said nothing. Then said he unto them, I've now I've covered this before, but we have to go through it again. But now he was about to go to the cross to shed his blood on the cross to die, bury, and raise again the third day according to the scriptures. He was about to go make the sacrifice for sins in his own blood. Okay? Make the perfect atonement for sin. Okay? What does this mean? But now, why? Because the dispensation is about to end see, with him dying, burying, and being rose again the third day according to the scriptures, shedding his blood on the cross to make the atonement for sin. Okay? The dispensation was going to end when he was offering them the kingdom of heaven. They were under the law. They were under the law. The New Testament does not begin with the birth of the testator, dear friend. Read Hebrews chapter 9, okay? It begins with the death. The death of the testator. That's why we are not supposed to celebrate Christ Mass. Because we are told to, if anything, celebrate the fact that he died. Buried. And rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Our life came by his death. And our new life is given unto us by grace through faith at our death of ourselves. See. But the dispensation was about to end. And hence, bring in this dispensation the time of the Gentiles. Then said he unto them, But now, he that hath a purse, let him take it. And likewise his scrip, and he that hath no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. Now Peter in the garden, he goes and whops off the guy's ear, and then our Lord's like, hey, 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 put your, put your sword away. Not yet. Why? Because he was still alive. Okay? The dispensation was about to end, but yet they were still on the law. He still had to, he still had to go do what he was going to go do. Okay? It wasn't the time. It wasn't this dispensation. Okay? But note that. And he that hath no sword, he's telling them to go buy and get a sword. A weapon. Why? Because the king's not going to be on the earth. Let him sell his garment and buy one. For I say unto you, that this that is written must yet be accomplished in me. And he was reckoned among the transgressors. For the things concerning me have an end. And they said, Lord, behold, here are two swords. And he said unto them, It is enough. So, with the king leaving, who was supernaturally, could feed and provide for his own people, and supernaturally, <laughs> when someone messes with his people during the kingdom of heaven, they're going to have to deal with him personally. See, when you and I, have, as the church of the living God, when we die, we're going to go to the judgment seat of Christ and give an account for everything. It's going to be scary, isn't it? <laughs> but um, we're going to give an account of ourselves to God. And then when our Lord comes back at his second coming, he's going to send us. We're going to be with him. And he's going to send us out to get those people and bring them to him. It's not a two catching away, by the way. Okay, Two catching away is heresy. Okay. I don't care what Mr. Ruckman taught. That's heresy. There are not two catching aways. There's only one catching away where he says, come up hither. There's only one of those. The other one is where he sends his angels out to get them. Those angels will be us at his second coming, okay? I can't remember what video I've covered that in, but I have covered that before, okay? So, yeah. the two raptures. Rapture is not in the scripture. But the two rapture thing is heresy. Okay? There's only one catching away. But, okay? 
dispensation was ending. And the king supernaturally can provide and protect. Him going out of the way, yes, he can still provide and protect for you, but the king is not on the earth. Okay? So, a father, a wife, under threat of life to himself as provider and protector for his family. There are some out there who will tell you, roll over and die, because it, you're a sin if you escalate force. See, one of the things that the Jesuits want to do is to have as many of those who are of the Church of the Living God get messed up and get killed by uh, their false doctrines. And one way they're doing it, it's the Christian thing to do to go get the steel of the Jesuit poniard. And they got the, the Christians telling people that it's your Christian duty to take the steel of the Jesuit poniard. If you can't figure out what I mean when I do this, sorry. Okay? They're telling you that. Then you also have Christians telling you, be a doormat, roll over. You know, you're a father, you're a husband, someone's going to kill you and go after your wife and children? And no, 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 just die. Let, let them kill you because see, you're, a sin. <laughs> you're in sin if you fight back. Like, again, my one brother, my beloved brother, um, when his own son uh, assaulted him, punched him, and stuff like that, he didn't fight back. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay? But if he had his children with him, his wife, and even his own son pulled a gun on him and was going to kill him and then kill the entire family, what was he supposed to do? Just stand there and let it happen? See, the dispensation was changing. And the king is not on the earth right now. His body is. But see, depraved indifference is sin. That's sin. Telling people not to fight back. Hey, like I said, if you don't want to fight back, if you run into something that is none of your fault, if you get a guy robbing you, if you're of the church of the living God, what, why would you be afraid? It's like, <laughs> go ahead and kill me. You're going to send me home. Give me your money. I ain't giving you my money. My money. <laughs> Go ahead and shoot me. You're going to be doing me a favor, Jack. <laughs> that's what you want to do? Go for it. If you're single, if that's why, you know, if your children are grown and all gone, whatever. Okay? But if you have a crippled wife, if you have children under the age of accountability, still living at home, can't fend for themselves. And something dramatic happens. And there are those out there tell, telling you, preaching to you, not to fight back, but to just die. That ain't true. That is part of the ecumenical love them into the kingdom thing. Beware of that, brethren. Beware of that. Beware of that. And beware of those who preach that. Beware of those who preach that. And you know, it just it, it, it begs the question. It begs the question. Galatians chapter 3. Verses 1 under verse 5. Oh foolish Galatians. Who hath bewitched you that ye should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you? What does that mean? That means he is an ambassador. He preached the gospel to them, the death, burial, and resurrection by grace through faith. Okay, By the way he was living, he was living as the church of the living God. He was living as an ensample. Okay? This only would I learn of you. Received ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Are ye so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, are ye now made perfect in the flesh? Have ye suffered so many things in vain, 
if it be yet in vain? He therefore that ministereth to you the Spirit, capital S, and worketh miracles among you, doeth he it by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith? Hmm. You know, when you think about it, someone who's preaching pacifism to the uh, to the to the point of um, euthanasia, <laughs> um, you know, killing yourself. Uh, are you so foolish, having begun in the spirit? Are you now made perfect by the flesh? Is not your life in God's hands anyway? Mm. Who, who hath bewitched you? Hmm. I'm the, the Apostle Paul. Did he ever fight back? Hmm. Uh, I'm sure he must have put up a guard, <laughs> don't you think? But there again, go to Acts chapter 17. Okay? Acts chapter 17. Verses 16 on to verse 23. Now while Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was stirred in him. When he saw the city wholly given to idolatry. And also the thing to remember about Paul, um, when he went through all what he went through, he was usually outnumbered greatly. Like when you read in the book of Acts when he when they caught him in the temple, they gang rushed him. He was greatly outnumbered. Okay? Most of the time, pretty much all of the time that you read about or Paul talks about his afflictions from the people and all these things, he was greatly outnumbered too. Just, you know, kind of like almost a 20 against 1 kind of thing. <laughs> so, that would be a, a far stretch for anybody to uh, <laughs> take on. Unless you had a pistol or something, but then again, then, then never mind, okay? Therefore, disputing... Okay, now, when Paul was at Athens, his spirit was stirred in him. When he saw the city wholly given to idolatry. Does it bother you that... The Jesuits, through these church buildings, are poisoning, raping people's minds. You get annoyed and bothered by the Jehoes and the morons, the Mormons, okay? And these, <laughs> these Lutherans. We're not Catholic. Um, excuse me, do you know about the concordat that the, you guys in the Catholic Church signed together basically the Catholics welcoming you back into the <laughs> into Catholicism. Heretic, heretic, get your tracks out of here. Okay, fine. Yeah. Does it stir you with the false doctrines of, of Catholicism? What you hear in the media, what they're preaching to the people, the religion of the poison crown psychological operation? Hmm? Oh, for those of you, uh, poison and crown, look that up in Latin and you figure it out, okay? Does it stir you? Or are you just more angry about those who preach the true gospel and uh, who are truly a, of the church of the living God? Hmm. Don't worry. Sooner or later, we're getting out of here. <laughs> then you can have this little lovely world of yours. <laughs> up to dosage there, buddy. Okay? Let's continue. Therefore disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews and with the devout persons, and in the market daily with them that met with him. Disputed with them. Uh, do you think he was, God loves you, God's not mad at you, God's not going to judge you. Do you think that's what Paul was preaching? Huh? The love of God. The love of God is Christ in him crucified. So see, see, that's just what euphemism again. What is the love of God? Don't judge to them. Don't judge. Don't judge. Don't fight back. <laughs> what is the true love of God? You going to hell. God's angry at you. Unless you come to him on his terms, broken, 
contrite and fear the Lord, call upon his name. That's the love of God. But no, the love of the God of the love of God of the Christians today. We're not judging you. Hey, you, you might be having an affair with your father's wife, but hey, we're not judging you because remember in First Corinthians chapter five, Paul said you were puffed up. Because they're like, we're, we're not judging you. Look, we're Christians and we ain't judging you. <laughs> yeah. Go on with your little Christian thing. Go right ahead. Eat as much as your Christianity as you want. I ain't a Christian. If you're saved, you're not either, whether you like it or not. Verse 18. Then certain philosophers of the Eupicureans and of the Stoics encountered him. And some said, what will this babbler say? Others some, he seemeth to be a setter forth of strange gods, because he preacheth unto them Jesus and the resurrection. And they took him, and brought him unto Areopagus, saying, May we know what this new doctrine, whereof thou speakest, is? For thou bringest certain strange things to our ears. We would know, therefore, what these things mean. For all the Athenians and strangers which were there spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing. Hold your place here. Hold your place here. Go to Ezekiel. Um, Ezekiel. Uh, I think it is 33. Thank you. Ezekiel chapter, what is that? Yeah. Ezekiel chapter 33. Verses 30 on to verse 33. Also thou son of man, the children of thy people still are talking against thee by the walls and in the doors of the houses, and speak one to another, every one to his brother, saying, Come ye, come, I pray you, and hear what is the word that cometh forth from the Lord. And they come unto thee, as the people cometh, and they sit before thee as my people, and they hear thy words, but they will not do them. For with their mouth they shew much love, but their heart goeth after their covetousness. And lo, thou art unto them as a very lovely song of one that hath a pleasant voice, and can play well on an instrument, for they hear thy words, but they do them not. And when this cometh to pass, lo, it will come. That ought to send this chill down your spine. Then shall they know that a prophet hath been among them. Back in Acts chapter 17, for all, verse 21, for all the Athenians and strangers which were there spent their time in nothing else but to tell or to hear some new thing. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things ye are too superstitious. Hey, you're not using the authorized version of the scriptures? What does that say? Religious? Hmm? It says religious, doesn't it? You know, there's a difference between religion and superstition. Even though Catholicism likes to blend the two, okay? Things that are different are not the same. If you actually have been following along and you are not using the authorized version of the scripture, uh, you know, the, the King James, um, you've noticed by now <laughs> glaring differences. Which one is not like the other? <laughs> Ask yourself this, dear friend, if you're using something that's not the scriptures. Why does everybody hate this book? Why? Why are there a myriad of new Bibles coming out with updates all the time? Why? You figure that out. Verse 23, 
For as I passed by, I beheld your devotions. I found an altar to, with this inscription, all capital letters, to the unknown God, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, him declare I unto you. So Paul disputed with people. And he was in, he was in no way doing the, God loves you, God's not mad at you. Hey, you can go ahead and do that way. What, do you think Paul went down and behaved as these people to win them to Christ? This love gospel thing that these Christians are preaching um, is absolutely vomitous. And you know, brethren, Church of the Living God, that, that's, that's what these Christians in these buildings, I'm pointing this way because there's a big Lutheran church building over there. They're Catholics. <laughs> oh boy, they don't like being called that even though they are. But, um, yeah, there's a big church building over here. But um, that's what these people are preaching. That is what Christianity is preaching. You're saved. You're not a Christian. You're of the church of God or the church of the living God. Now, let's go to, of course, Second Corinthians chapter 11 verses 23 on the verse 29 again 2nd Corinthians chapter 11 verses 23 on the verse 29 are they ministers of Christ I speak as a fool I am more and labor is more abundant and stripes above measure in prisons oft in prisons more frequent and deaths oft you think these Christians who's preaching to you, God loves you. God loves everybody. God's love is unconditional. Oy vey, give me a break. Make me vomit. Makes my buttocks twitch. Okay? That's... <laughs> They're damning you to hell. That's not the God of the Scriptures. That's not the true Jesus Christ. Okay? That's what you want to hear. You want to hear what they're telling you. You need to hear, repent. <laughs> repent. Repent or perish. That's what you need. But you want to hear, God loves you. Of the Jews, five times received I forty stripes, save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods. Hmm. Note the plurality use here. Once was I stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. In night and day I have been in the deep, in journeyings often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, plural, in perils by mine own countrymen, in perils by the brethren, uh, heathen, excuse me, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren. In weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst and fastings often, in cold and nakedness, besides those things that are without, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches, who is weak, and I am not weak, who is offended, and I burn not, See, ecumenicalism, pacifism, pacifistic ecumenicalism wants to put out whatever fire might be in you about what's going on right here so you can roll over when the Jesuit steamrollers come around. Very deceptive, very clever, very clever. And they are using the right types of people to promote this soft, weak ecumenical doctrine. Such a shame. Such a shame. And of course, go to 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Verse 
thou. Oh, we will be reading verses 1 on to verse 19. Thou, therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others also. Thou, therefore, endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life. Yeah, we're supposed to be separate. Not be engaging in worldly things. We are supposed to be separate, holy, okay? Why? So we can do war. That he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. And if a man also strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned, except he strive lawfully. The husbandman that laboreth must be first partaker of the fruits. Consider what I say, and the Lord give thee understanding in all things. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel, wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds, but the word of God is not bound. If your enemy hunger, give him bread to eat, and if he hunger, if he's thirsty, give him water to drink. Hmm. And remember, we already looked at it in uh, Second Corinthians. When Paul came up with people, uh, problems with persons, you know, spirit, soul, and body, that's what a person is, uh, he was greatly outnumbered, usually. You know, usually. To where it was like one against 20. Okay? But thus again, your father, your husband, you have children, you have a wife who depend on you, a protection for, your, uh, for you, the head of the house, the Lord's blessing you so you can provide for your own, and then someone's going to kill you to go after your wife and children. So what, you're just supposed to roll over and, and die, right? That ain't scripture, boy. Mm -mm. No. No. Uh. Therefore, I endure all things for the elect's sake. Picking up at verse 10 that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, dead to the world, we shall also live with him in the kingdom of heaven and also when we get resurrected. Okay? If we suffer, we shall also reign with him, suffer for doing the work of the Lord by standing by the scripture. If we deny him, he will also deny us. Uh, if he, you know, we chicken out. We don't take our stands as he calls us to. It, deny, uh, deny us doesn't mean that he will deny us salvation. Because if we are of the church of the living God, we are sealed unto the day of redemption. We have the Lord in us. He cannot deny himself. We're going to see that real quick here. But the denying us is um, deny us a blessing, deny us some mercy, deny us some grace. Not salvation because you are sealed. You're going to heaven. The denying there is not salvific. Di denying there could be Answered prayer, answered provision, help, health, whatever. Okay? But the denying us, he also will deny us, does not mean that you lose your salvation. No. No. That doesn't mean that at all. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful. He cannot deny himself. Why? Because we are part of him. Because he lives within us. That circumcision made without hands, okay? That circumcision made without hands is our Lord Jesus Christ within us, okay? I have a video about that too. I'll try to remember to put that in there, okay? Of these things put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers. Study. To shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. See, 
See, that's, that's a lot of the problem. The Sermon on the Mount is for a different dispensation, the kingdom of heaven. There's no faith. The, he, faith is mentioned one time in form of a rebuke in uh, what is that uh, Matthew chapter 6 verse 30 okay in a form of a rebuke the faith they were having was to be on their king okay not in the death burial and resurrection because the death burial and resurrection is nowhere to be found in the Sermon on the Mount okay but then he says in Luke 22 but now now get your stuff, get a sword. Why? Because the king was going away. The dispensation was ending and changing. Dear, dear friend, you have to rightly divide the word of truth. Or you're going to have problems. You're going to have problems. All kinds of problems. Okay? But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. Profane and vain babblings, like depraved indifference. Mm -hmm. Just believe. God loves you. God's love is unconditional. Mm. And their word will eat as doth the canker, of whom is Hymenius and Philetus, whom concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already, and overthrow the faith of some. See, that's what these coadjutors and infiltrators want to do. They want to overthrow the faith of you, the church of the living God. You the babe. You got these, you know, God loves you, don't judge people. You know, don't judge their fruit. Don't judge, don't judge, don't judge. Okay? And also, those are saying, you know, preaching Christian pacifism. Yeah. Yeah. Look, like I said, again, I have to mention this again. My, my dear beloved brother, um, who, whose son assaulted him, and he did not fight back. He didn't even defend himself. If I were in his shoe, if I were wearing my, uh, his shoes, and my own son did that to me, I wouldn't fight back either. If my son took out a butcher knife and was going to, uh, you know, uh, what is that? Give me a Colombian necktie, or something like that. Um, yeah, that's different. That yes, yes, yes. Or if he put a gun at me, at me, pointed a gun at me then yeah, that's, that's different. That's different. Okay? What, what, have you never been beat up before? <laughs> I know it's humiliating and painful, but usually you will survive getting tar kicked out of you. Uh, someone decides to eviscerate you with a butcher knife or something like that or wants to shoot you, yeah, you, you know, you're going home. You know? That's like I said, you know, Someone puts a gun in my throat. Give me your money. I ain't giving you my money. I'll kill you. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, you're sending me home. But Brad, you got a wife. Yeah. I'm not saying I wouldn't defend myself. But see, that doesn't scare me. <laughs> Our Lord said, Be not afraid of those who kill the body, and after that there's nothing more they can do. And that is truth. You know? The Jesuits, you, you read Alberto's testimony, they can come up with some very creative ways to torture people. They had this torture thing where they dripped water into somebody's mouth and a dry rag kept, was like slowly inch by, or centimeter by centimeter, a drop, and it would be going down into their esophagus, and then after a while they just rip it out, you know? Read Fox's Book of Martyrs about how Catholic Catholics are experts at torture. Is it it's no surprise that when it comes to psychological torture that these Catholics are also very brilliant. You think about that when it comes to psychological manipulation. Catholics are experts at all forms of torture, whether it be physical or whether it be mental. Even if it be spiritual. 
They're experts at torture. Verse 19. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his. Why? Because he cannot deny himself. We are his body. If you are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, a new creature in Christ Jesus, you are his. You belong to him. You're part of his body. Uh, nevertheless, the foundation, and there's no other fun foundation that can be laid than Jesus Christ, okay? Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. You're sealed unto the day of redemption. The Lord knoweth them that are his. You know, because you got the circumcision made without hands. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. And also, what, what happened? What happened to a lot of these people who came out with strong stands, you know, willing to, to go to battle for the Lord, knowing that the Lord was with them? What happened? Jeremiah chapter 22. Knowing Jeremiah, with what's going on today, brethren? You know, the Lord says to Jeremiah, if you have run with the footmen, how are you going to handle horses? <laughs> you know? Yeah, if you run with the footmen, how are you going to handle the horses? <laughs> Jeremiah chapter 2. Verses 5 on verse 13. Thus saith the Lord, What iniquity have your fathers found in you, that they are gone far from me, and have walked after vanity, and are become vain? Neither said they, Where is the Lord that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, that led us through the wilderness, through a land of deserts and of pits, through a land of drought and of the shadow of death, through a land that no man passeth through? And where no man dwelt, and I brought you into a plentiful country, to eat the fruit thereof, and the goodness thereof. But when ye entered, ye defiled my land, and made mine heritage an abomination. The priests said not, Where is the Lord? And they that handled the law knew me not. Hmm. The pastors also transgressed against me, and the prophets prophesied by Baal and walked after things that do not profit. Oh, preaching things that people want to hear get you a lot of false friends. Oh, yeah. Yeah, people will flock to you because you're preaching what they want to hear, not what they need to hear. When you're preaching to people what they need to hear, people are not going to like you. You're going to have people send you threats. I hope nothing happens to your wife. <laughs> I couldn't put that uh, I couldn't put that past a certain <laughs> friend of mine to make such a threat like that. But you'll get threatened. Weird things will happen to you. you no, know, the old saying goes, if you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. But it is taxing. It does wear on you. But then again, who is your strength? Do you fear men or do you fear God? Verse 9, Wherefore I will yet plead with you, plead as a lawyer. Not like, oh please, oh please, that's not the pleading there. Like a defense lawyer or a prosecutor. The plead there is in context as a lawyer pleads. Not like, oh please, oh please. Come on now. Wherefore I will yet plead with you, said the Lord, and will and with your children's children will I plead. For I for pass over the isles of Kittim, and see, and send unto Kedar, and consider diligently, and see if there be such a thing. Hath a nation changed their gods? which are yet no gods, but my people have changed 
their glory for that which doth not profit. There you see it again. Hmm. There you see it again. Hmm. Doing things that will not profit. You get a lot of people liking you. But then again, remember, they liked the false prophets. And they stoned the true prophets. The ones who truly spake for our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. They hate those who rebuke in the gate. But hey, when you start preaching the love gospel, the ecumenical love gospel, everybody's your buddy, isn't they? That's what these people in these buildings are doing. That's what you're going to... Other platforms, too. Excuse me. Not just here on uh, YouTube, but other platforms. You know, you, you see a lot of... I, I've seen a lot of anti-Semitism and a disgusting amount of this ecumenical stuff. The love gospel. Not just here on YouTube, you know. Yeah, I, I, I search... Uh, I look on other platforms, of course. Of course. But, uh, yeah, this is... You need any more proof that our time is coming to an end? Hmm? Verse 12. Be astonished, O ye heavens, at this, and be horribly afraid. Be ye very desolate, saith the Lord. Verse 13. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken, forsaken me, the fountain of living waters and hewed them out cisterns, broken cisterns, that can hold no water. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters. Hmm. John 4. John 4, verses 10, on to verse 14. G, John 4, Verses 10 under verse 14. D d d dear friend, if you're not using the authorized version of the scripture, um, get one. Please. Don't waste your time with the Bible. Get the scriptures. Okay? Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink. Thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. But wait, didn't the God of the Old Testament just say they rejected me, the fountain of living waters? Hmm. The woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank thereof himself, and his children, and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into life everlasting. Hmm. So Jesus is giving living water, but yet the God of the Old Testament said they have rejected me, the fountain of living water. Um, hmm. So the God of the Old Testament is the same God of the New Testament. Really? Well, yeah. Yeah. That's because God has a spirit, the Holy Ghost, a soul, God the Father, and a body. The Word made flesh. Spirit, soul, and body. You and I are made in the similitude of God. We're made in the image of God. We have a spirit. We have a soul and body. Mm. Mm. Uh, while we're in John 4, look at verse 25 and 26, by the way. The woman saith unto him, I know that Messiah is coming, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Jesus saith unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. 
Jesus just said he was the Messiah. Hmm. The anointed one. Go to John chapter 8. John chapter 8. What happened? Like we, we saw in Alberto's uh, thing. These guys were going strong, but the pressure, the threats, the intimidation from the Catholic Jesuit coadjutors, and they broke. Got too much for them. And what did they do? Then they, they were taking strong stands. Then they shift, and then they start uh, speaking ear-tickling and itching things. Jumping on bandwagons, going after people who stand for the truth. Not, not, ju not just on this platform, on others as well. Okay. It's very sad. It's very sad to see. It's very sad to see. But you got to remember, brethren. You got to remember. This is a, the sign of the times. This is the sign of the times. And with what they're doing to these children, that's going to be in another video. That's actually a video that was supposed to be one part, but then because of a brother and a sister, now it's going to be a two-part thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But anyway, John chapter 8, verses 20 under verse 24. These words spake Jesus in the treasury as he taught in the temple, and no man laid hands on him, for his hour was not yet come. Then said Jesus again unto them, I go my way, and ye shall seek me, and shall die in your sins. Whither I go ye cannot come. Then said the Jews, Will he kill himself, because he saith, Whither I go ye cannot come? And he said unto them, Ye are from beneath, I am from above, ye are of this world. I am not of this world. And he, and I said therefore unto you, that ye shall die in your sins. For if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. And then, and, and then of course, what is that? You read um, um, John chapter 14. Uh, verses 8 and 9 specifically. And in Isaiah, I am he. Unless ye believe I am he. And Jesus called himself the Messiah. And you read uh, Isaiah chapter 9 about the Prince of Peace, the everlasting Father. Jesus Christ is God the Father. Jesus Christ is God. The Godhead. The fullness of the Godhead bodily. Spirit, soul, body. Is the Jesus you believe on, so called, um, one of three persons? A person is a spirit, soul, and body. Uh, read 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Tells you what a person is, okay? Spirit, soul, and body, okay? Um, is your Jesus the second person of a three person, one God, whoop, Trinity? So he's the lesser God because the first God is greater than he, right? No, unless, if, uh, for if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. Jesus is the Father. Who saves you? Jesus. Is Jesus the Father? He is not the Father. Uh, yes, he is. Who is Jesus to you? Hmm? Look, if you there's a playlist about Jesus is God the Father, go ahead and check that out. Okay, if you have questions. What happened with these people? As we saw in Alberto, a lot of these people cave under pressure. And they forsake the fountain of living water. 
unfortunately, in John chapter 8, verses 42 on to verse 47, Jesus said unto them, If God were your Father, ye would love me, because Jesus is the Father. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do ye not understand my speech, even because ye cannot hear my word? Ye, plural, ye is plural, by the way. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do ye not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. I could never imagine. You know, you read about Bloody Mary. The thing about Bloody Mary over in Mary of England, um, there was one guy who was, um, oh, I forget what his name was, who was with um, the little boy king, the son of Henry VIII, who did good, and then Bloody Mary came in. But there was a guy who um, who was, I forget what he was, his name was called, but he, to save his skin, he confessed Catholicism, but then he recanted because of guilt. Um, I can't imagine. I can't imagine compromising. I can't imagine it. Going ecumenical because of constant threats. I mean, my life has, my life has been, my wife's life has been threatened. I have been. Well, you think you're going to stop me? The only one who can stop this is the Lord. And if this ends, it is because the Lord said, okay, brother, that's enough. You've, you've had your time. That's it. It's up to him. Not to me. Because, to be honest, I fought the Lord to do this. I didn't really want to do this. But he had different plans. And for this I know that thou favorest me because you don't let mine enemies triumph over me. If this counsel of work be of men, it will come to naught. And if man brings something to naught, was it truly of the Lord anyway? That's the question, isn't it? And also, too, Second Peter, chapter two. Second Peter, chapter two. We're almost done. You'll you'll see that it's nighttime. Uh, right now, it's nine thirty-eight p.m. Uh, I am going to be going to bed, and then tomorrow morning, uploading this. So when you see this, uh, and you see the night, and it's like, wow, I, I recorded this on the, what is today's date? Um, the Song of Solomon, chapter 2, talking about the catching away. It's the second today. So I recorded this on the second, uploading this on the third. So, so you know, okay? Second uh, Peter, chapter 2, verses 11 on to verse 19. Uh, now let's read verses 12 under verse 19. But these as natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed speak evil of, of the things that they understand not and shall utterly perish in their own corruption and shall receive the reward of unrighteousness as they that counted pleasure to riot in the daytime spots they are and blemishes 
sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you, having eyes full of adultery, and that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls. And heart they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children. Keep this in mind with the Christians of today, out there that you run into on the platforms and stuff like that, okay? Which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray, following, following the way of Balaam, the son of Bosor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness, but was rebuked for his iniquity, the dumb ass speaking with man's voice, forbade the madness of the prophet. These are wells without water. Interesting. We already kind of looked at that in a way, didn't we? Clouds that are carried with a tempest. Ways are always movable. Wells without water. Deep but no sustenance come out of them. To whom the mist of darkness, a darkness that can be felt, to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. Remember the one guy who Paul cursed and a darkness mist fell upon his eyes and he went about people uh, leading to guide him by the hand? For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, God loves you. Just believe. Don't fight back. They allure through the lusts of the flesh, through much wantonness. Those that were clean escaped from them who live in error. While they promised them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome, of the same is he brought in, brought for, uh, okay, let me say, read that again. For of whom a man is overcome, of the same is he brought in bondage. Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6, verse 16. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death, or of obedience unto righteousness. Servants, it doesn't say slaves, by the way, because you have a choice. Remember, God isn't forcing you, neither is the devil. Dear brethren, these are the last days with blatant anti-Semitism and the increase it's always been there but I, I mean I'm seeing it a not lot a lot more now right now at this present time of this this disgusting love gospel God loves you God's not judging you Just don't judge anybody Everybody's your friend. Everybody's your brother. Just believe. Don't fight back. It's not what the scriptures teach. Not at all. Depraved indifference look that up if you're wondering that is sin that is not what the scriptures teach you know the time is coming where <laughs> you need to really consider you really need to consider You know, you hear, God loves you, but then again, you think about, well, why would a loving God send me to hell? 
you, you, you Christian, you're telling me that God loves me and he's not mad at me, he's not going to judge me, but yet he's going to send me to hell if I don't accept him? Who does the accepting, by the way? See, that's what they preach to you. God's love is at Calvary. And it was once. He loved, past tense. And he gave, past tense. And if you don't go to the Lord through Calvary, through the death of your self-righteousness, brokenness, godly sorrow for your sins, it's your fault that he died. And in fear of the Lord, you call upon the name of the Lord, and that he may save you and make you a new creature. If you don't come to him on his terms, and you reject that true gospel, God's wrath is for you. God's love is not for you. You need to understand that. And at a time right now, with these, especially too with these, <laughs> with these babies, with these poison crown babies being born. Gonna be doing a video on that um, Monday. Wow. God's judgment is coming. Better be ready. You need to be saved. Because if not, you're going to go through the timing Jacob's trouble. Good luck to you if you are. So, it's going to be it for this video. Like I said, I'm, I'm going to upload this tomorrow morning. Um, thank you so much for watching this. If you do, thank you to all of you who pray for us and who, um, who help us. Thank you. We love you. We pray for so many. We pray for even our enemies. Not all of them. There are those out there who have made their choice and are gone. There, there's no coming back for them. We pray for the, the righteous judgment of God to be upon those people who are truly enemies of our Lord. Okay? Hopefully, maybe in God's judgment, they might actually be broken and come to true repentance. Maybe. Maybe. I don't want to see my worst enemy. I don't want to even see my good friend from Blackpool go to hell. And he would love nothing more than to run me over with a vehicle a hundred times. <laughs> so. But anyway. That, that, that's enough. That's enough. Gotta go to bed. Thank you, brethren. We love you. See you in the next video.